and we are live so hello everybody once again my name is sanket and i welcome you all into today's session where we will go ahead and talk about pretty uh, you know well known topic uh, in today's world that is blockchain so blockchain for those of you who know already it is undoubtedly the promising technology that the world has been talking about and has the potential of transforming various sectors and that's perhaps the reason why blockchain based solutions are being used in the enterprise corporate government probably all across the globe and this actually has resulted in the growth of various job opportunities for aspiring developers and blockchain enthusiasts however an individual who wants to start or become a block uh, you know blockchain ethereum developer may not have the right direction to pursue his career at exaltus we have not only been working with the blockchain technology but we have also been delivering classes and trainings for the same in today's webinar uh, on how to become an ethereum developer it will go ahead and prove out to be a great resource for the aspirants and for this webinar today i have amresh sahu with me Amrish is a certified blockchain developer and he brings with him more than a decade of his knowledge. So without further ado, let me go ahead and pass on the mic to him so that he can go ahead and take you into the beautiful world of blockchain. Amrish, you can hear me, right? Uh yes, yeah, Sanket. All right, the mic is all yours. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone hello everyone uh, myself uh, amrish sahu so today we are going to discuss uh, about how to become a ethereum blockchain developer being a blockchain developer uh, in today's date it's a, it's it's a awesome thing it's a awesome skill set you can have but before that something about myself i'm a, a blockchain trainer and uh, you know, you can say i started off as a blockchain enthusiast in the first place uh around 4 four to 4 and a half years back i got into the space of uh, blockchain and uh, slowly and steadily uh, i grew my knowledge and uh, i took my certification from iit kanpur uh, on blockchain technology and uh, i am working with exaltius right now as a blockchain trainer uh, with experiences in uh, protocols uh, which are developing defi Uh, decentralized exchanges and nft marketplaces all those things which are in the crypto space or blockchain space so uh, right now today we'll be discussing about uh, how to become a developer but before that i would definitely like to share some major issues which are existing in today's world and the issues which blockchain technology is solving right so today when we look around uh, there are many problems uh, that are existing in the present day businesses the first being lack of trust trust is something which we have to do we have no option but we have to trust the agencies or the uh, people those who are managing today's systems because today's systems are centralized yes we live in a centralized world most of the things we see around are uh, controlled centrally by maybe the government or some uh, companies big shot companies or something like that you can say so we have a big issue uh, when it comes to trusting those centralized agencies so this is one of the big issue which is existing today next with centralization comes another problem that is a lack of transparency if i look at my bank the uh, the place where i uh, like keep my money so i don't know if my money is being given out or given to people uh, those who are worth enough to take a loan or something like that or for that matter the governments the central agencies they lack or they have a lot of Uh, issues with their transparency so again that in turn reduces the trust on them of course with central agencies and uh, the present day systems there is a lot of mediator charges which we have to give in order to use the systems for example if i want to transfer money from one country to another uh, 
to one of my near and dear ones, I have to pay a lot of mediator charges. And I, I'll tell you a very interesting fact out here. It is very interesting to know in 1885 or 86 was the date, uh, was the year in which the first international transfer happened uh, by Western Union. Okay. And uh, if you would search on the uh, internet, you would find that the transaction charges was something around 2 to 3%. Today, if I do a similar transaction, in spite of all the growth and development in the field of technology and convenience in transferring, still today also we are uh, we would be paying similar kind of transaction charges of 2 to 3%. This is alarming, right? So there is something, there is something which is creating all these issues, okay? Next, of course, when we are dealing with central agencies, we have a big issue of information security. How many times you uh, might have seen you have logged into a website, given your email address, and next day you have you have your uh, email uh, inbox spammed with mails. So basically what happened, your information was leaked. So your information is not your information in today's date. It is, if it is with the centralized agencies, it is, uh, many a times we come across cases where your information is sold without your permission. So these are certain problems which are existing in today's date, which blockchain technology is claiming to solve. Because of these issues, we have seen many examples of many issues that have that we have seen in recent times, and it is happening every day. Let's take a very uh, prominent example, which was a result of the centralization and its effect that was the 2008 subprime crisis who will forget that because of the mistake done by some banks some big shot banks in us right the entire world went into a recession in 2008 so it is a huge concern in today's date are we trusting uh, uh, the the way we are trusting uh, the big corporates or the big entities or the government is it wise enough to do that or like we need to think about it right of course i mentioned about the international transaction charges that is huge in fact uh, on a personal level if i just do a transaction sending money from one account to another uh, you have to pay a lot of transaction charges right in fact we have atms to withdraw money from atms we have to pay the bank uh, some charges after a certain number of transactions. So this is a concern because I have to pay, I have to pay money to withdraw my own money. This is ridiculous. So these are certain things which are alarming. Centralization and lack of transparency in, in government. Of course, the government decisions that are being taken is not transparent always. The decisions taken in big corporates which affect our life is not transparent again. So a lot of concerns are there uh, because of all these issues, right? So blockchain solves these issues. And if you dig deep, you would be amazed uh, to the level it is capable of solving these issues. So what is blockchain technology? Let's discuss first. Blockchain is a peer-to-peer, -peer, decentralized, distributed system, right? So we have three keywords out here. One is peer-to-peer, -peer, one is decentralized, one is distributed. Okay, let's go ahead. It is cryptographically secure, append only, immutable, and updated via consensus, consensus or agreement among all peers. So basically it's a peer-to-peer -peer system or you can say it is a distributed decentralized system. It has a ledger, we'll discuss about that. So, but all these words, peer-to-peer, -peer, decentralized, distributed, cryptography, immutable, again, amazing, okay? And consensus, okay? These all things are the building blocks, I would say, which makes, the blockchain technology so amazing definitely most people would have heard about blockchain but i would confess the first time i heard about blockchain many of you would have faced it we confuse blockchain with with bitcoin right so it happens right so but blockchain is a technology bitcoin is just an implementation of that technology right so let's not go deep into the definition just let us try to understand what exactly is blockchain before that let's go into the history it started off with in 1991 where the concept of blockchain started okay there was a paper written in which 
the concept of blockchain technology came into being but it was not into in limelight until 2008 when bitcoin was introduced by satoshi nakamoto where he wrote the bitcoin white paper in 2009 the first bitcoin transaction uh, happened and in 2010 the the very famous uh, first transaction of bitcoin happened where uh, the first commercial transaction of bitcoin happened in 2010 where uh, 10000 bitcoins were paid for in uh, for uh, two pizza delivered to be delivered right for two pizza whose value was around 41 dollars so 10000 bitcoins were paid and that is recorded as uh, the pizza bitcoin day which was like 22nd of may if i remember right so just imagine from where to where bitcoin has reached today and the technology has reached today 2011 uh, until then until 2011 only bitcoin was the only uh, i would say implementation of blockchain technology that was happening but 2011 some altcoins altcoin means some other coins similar to bitcoin came into being one of them being litecoin that that those are called alt altcoin they came into being but the biggest revolution that happened i would say in the blockchain technology that happened in 2013 when vitalik buterin introduced ethereum it changed the scenario altogether we'll understand what ethereum would and how it is different uh, would be and how it is different from bitcoin 2015 the ethereum was launched and in 2016 the dow attack happened and we had the first fork of ethereum chain right so these are one of uh, very important events that happened in the blockchain field in 2020 there was emergence of DeFi, decentralized finance and nfts we must have heard of nfts uh, non-fungible tokens that happened in 2020 and there was no looking back right and today there is widespread adoption of blockchain technology across all industries in today's date right so let's move ahead so let's talk about some features of blockchain first would be transparency the amazing part of this entire technology of blockchain is that it is completely trans transparent right so the opacity that exists in the centralized world is completely eliminated uh, by blockchain technology and all transaction that would happen on a public blockchain is visible to the public right so it is transparent next since it is decentralized and distributed right so it is highly available if for example if there is a record of data in the blockchain so it has we have multiple copies of the that particular data so what happens is if there is tampering of one of the database right doesn't matter uh, you have multiple copies to get the original database again it is it becomes very cost effective right since it is not centralized it is very cost effective and again it is immutable so once any data is stored in a blockchain it cannot be changed right once into the blockchain it cannot be changed which comes into uh, use in many places in in many use cases for example storing your land records for example uh, storing your uh, education details uh, storing your medical details all these things uh, it comes into play and since it is cryptographically secure so of course uh, it is it has a high uh, value of security added to it Basically, there are three main elements in a, a blockchain and three main things that, uh, that, that makes a blockchain come into being. First is the ledger. We have a ledger where all the transactions are stored. Whatever transactions happening on the blockchain, it is stored. So, and that is a distributed ledger. Next, we have a peer-to-peer -peer network. So we have a network of nodes connected to each other on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, which gives rise to the distributed nature of the blockchain and all the data and the transactions that are happening it is done on a cryptographically it is cryptographically secure so all these things make blockchain a unique thing which uh, definitely has a lot of use cases 
So when it comes to blockchain, we normally have three different types of blockchain. First one is a public blockchain. Next would be a private blockchain. And third one would be a permissioned blockchain, right? So in a public blockchain, there is consensus where all the nodes take part in it and all the participating members, uh, they do the consensus. But in a private blockchain, it is limited to a particular enterprise. So the blockchain is limited to a particular enterprise, but in public blockchain, it is across the globe. Okay, Anywhere, any place, if somebody is connected to the node, they participate in the consensus mechanism. But in a private blockchain, it is only limited to the admins or the people, those who are controlling the blockchain. But yes, the third type, the permission blockchain, you have limited access. People, those who have the rights, can participate in the census determination. Next would be the data access. The data access in a public blockchain, there are three types of blockchain, as I said, but in a public blockchain, data access is available to the public. So it is completely transparent. Anybody can come and see the data and uh, they can uh, see through it, all the data. But in a private blockchain, yes, as I said, it is restricted to limited people, those who can see the data. Third would be the permission blockchain. It is restricted to a certain degree. Third one is immutability, almost impossible to tamper. In a public blockchain, once a data is into your ledger, right, it is not possible to change it. So it is immutable in a public blockchain. But yes, in a private blockchain, which is limited to a particular enterprise, since it is controlled by the admins, the data can be changed, of course. And of course, in a permission also, it can be mutated. The resource required in a public blockchain is very low because everybody is using and everybody is contributing. So uh, the resources uh, for an individual uh, comes down. But in a private blockchain, it is high and a permission blockchain also, it is very high. When it comes to centralization, of course, in a public blockchain, it is completely decentralized. In a private blockchain, yes, it is centralized. And in a permission blockchain, it is semi-centralized. And the consensus that happens in a public blockchain is completely permissionless. Anybody can participate in the consensus process. In a private blockchain, you need permission. But in a permission blockchain, again, you need permission. So when you talk about blockchain, the, there are a blocks. I, I would say there are transactions which are stored in a block. The way we uh, write transaction in a notebook in a traditional way, or we store uh, transactions or data in a, maybe a server, but in a blockchain, there are a chain of blocks and each block stores the data or the ledger, right? So when you talk about a block, how it looks like, it's, it's basically, uh, of, it has two parts. It has a header and a body. The header has the uh, consensus proof of work and hash of the previous block. These are two main elements. There are many more, of course, but these, these are the two main elements that are stored in the header. And there are transactions which are stored in the body. So this is typically on a, a high level, you can say how a block looks like. And when we are talking of blockchain, so basically block is nothing but a chain of blocks connected to each other. right? So you can see there are three blocks out here, which has, suppose, let's talk about the first block. You can see there are four transactions that are there in the body. You have uh, the consensus proof. You would say it's the nonce and you have the hash of the previous block. Since it's a previous, it's, it's the first block, for example, there is uh, no previous block, so it could be zero. But in the second block, you can see, again, transactions would be there in the block. You would have the nonce or the proof of work. Apart from that, you have the hash of the previous block. So the, the second block is connected to the first block with the hash of the previous block and so on and so forth. This is how a chain of blocks go ahead. So you might, maybe you, you might not be so much clear about how exactly blockchain is working. So till now we have understood there is a block, okay? And there's a chain of blocks, right? So how a new transaction or a new data is stored in a blockchain, let's try to understand. Let's take a very simple example of a transaction happening between Mr. X and Mr. Y, 
where Mr. X is trying to send, for example, $10 or maybe one Bitcoin to Mr. Y. So what happens, first step, what happens is the transaction is requested. Mr. X requests a transaction of one Bitcoin to Mr. Y. Now what happens, this transaction is added. A block that represents the transaction is created and the new transaction is shared. The data of the new transaction is shared throughout the peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes that is a part of the blockchain so one person initiates it a, a node initiates a new transactions and shares it with everybody and tells everyone see this is the new transaction that is happening please verify them so everybody starts verifying what the new transaction is they will check if the person who is sending the money has enough balance or not they'll check uh, if the person receiving the money is a genuine person or not, is the address to which it is being sent, it is genuine or not. And this way, the transaction is verified. Once it is verified, then there is a competition among all these nodes of taking the rights of adding the new block to the blockchain. So that is where the mining, you must have heard about it, the mining process comes in and the person who wins the mining process, okay, takes the opportunity or he is given the opportunity of adding the new block to the blockchain and he receives the reward of adding the block to the blockchain. So basically, uh, the person who is able to solve a mathematical problem that is given to everybody first, get the opportunity of adding the new block to the blockchain. And once the block is added, everybody adds it into their blocks. So this is the process in which a transaction is done and a transaction is added to the blockchain, right? So now we were discussing about blockchain in general. Now let us come to Ethereum. So in the Bitcoin network, what exactly the thing is, in Bitcoin, there is only one functionality that you can transfer money from one person to another or one address to other. Okay. But uh, sooner or later, people realize that such amazing technology, which has properties of immutability, it has, it is distributed, it is transparent, and many stuffs are there, many advantages are there. Why to limit it to just transferring tokens? So the visionary personality, Vitaly Buterin, he proposed that why not to build applications and put it on the blockchain and the applications would run on the blockchain. So then he devised out Ethereum. So when it came to Ethereum, Ethereum was a revolution in itself because the limited functionality in blockchain, which only permitted people to just have one uh, functionality of transferring uh, uh, money from one place to other, it was, uh, I would say, it, it, it came became a revolution where this decentralized system could be used for many other purposes, right? So what makes Ethereum special? Ethereum is special because of three major things. First is the smart contracts. Second is the decentralized application. And third would be the Ether or the gas model. Let's try to understand what exactly it is. Now, what is a smart contract? A smart contract is a self-executing contract with the terms of agreement directly connected, uh, written in the code. So basically, these are business logics. Okay. So you write a code, put it on the blockchain, and you don't need a, a user or a third person to uh, or, or a centralized agencies to check whether the conditions are satisfying or not if the conditions are satisfied normally in centralized system there is a person sitting who is checking it right but everything is automated in a smart contract let's i'll give you a small example for example there is a smart contract which says that that is on the blockchain which says if i run 10 kilometers in a day i will get 10 dollars right so in a smart contract it would be written that so and so person runs 
10 kilometers and if that is verified then he has to be paid 10 dollars into his account so normally traditionally we would have uh, like centralized agencies checking it normally right but in a blockchain the business logic is written once the data comes into uh, the centralized system uh, sorry uh, into the uh, into the smart contract that mr x has run 10 kilometers so automatically without any approval nothing is required automatically the money is transferred to the account i'm just giving you a layman's example okay so in this way there are many things that can be thought of or executed using the smart contract they automatically execute transactions and enforce contractual obligations when certain preset conditions are met without the need for a trusted intermediary yes you don't need a trusted intermediary to do it the smart contract is a self executing contract condition satisfied then your thing is done right so initially introduced by ethereum smart contracts are now a key feature of many different blockchain platforms next let's discuss about dapps you must have heard about apps but when you come to web3 or the space of uh, blockchain we talk about dapps what is dapps dapps are decentralized applications a decentralized application often refers to referred to as dapp is an application that runs on a decentralized network typically a blockchain unlike traditional applications dapps are not controlled by a single authority and they leverage smart contracts to perform operations and maintain the app logics so again there is no intermediate authority uh, that is required in a in a blockchain uh, sorry in in a decentralized application and it is self executing this makes dapps transparent resistant to censorship and ensures that they operate exactly as programmed without any possibility of downtime fraud or third party interference right next the most important and the interesting part is the ether and gas okay so in blockchain technology in ethereum whatever transaction you want to do you have to pay some gas now you would say why this thing is there why we need to pay some gas this is done in order to stop or reduce the fraudulent or maybe the spamming activity that might occur which would jam the network if there is the transaction which are coming are useless unnecessarily somebody is just putting in transaction on and on and on back to back back to back without the need of it okay so that would lead to spamming so ether and gas are there so for every transaction you do you need to pay some gas right so ether is the native cryptocurrency for ethereum blockchain used as a form of payment for the transaction and the computational services on the ethereum network so you need to pay some gas and that has to be done through the cryptocurrency named ether so ethereum blockchain there is no there is no coin called ethereum it is ether right and that ether is needed to pay for the gas fees which we need to pay while operating on the ethereum blockchain right the gas on the other hand is a unit that measures the amount of the computational effort required to ensure operations on the ethereum network including the transaction and smart contract the gas price are paid in ether and are a crucial part of the incentive mechanism to compensate network participants the miners for processing and validating transaction on the ethereum blockchain so basically this gas is used as a fees is used as a fees for the people those who are participating in the consensus of the mining process in order to validate a transaction right so this is all about ether and the consensus which i am talking about it is not proof of work it is proof of stake proof of work consensus mechanism is used by bitcoin proof of stake consensus mechanism is used by ethereum and many other networks right the so proof of stake what exactly is proof of stake the probability of validating a new block is determined by how large the person uh, of uh, of a stake a person holds so if you want to become a validator uh, in a proof of stake you need to stake some ether 
and the more the amount of ether you would have staked the probability of you getting the chance of adding the block increases and that is how this consensus mechanism works so let's talk about since we are talking about it being an ethereum developer so the most important thing and i would say the the biggest thing which is important the most important thing is knowing solidity solidity is one of the languages and it is the most popular language in which the smart contract is written so it has got a lot of features uh, because of which it is the most popular it is the most popular coding language in today's day when it comes to the blockchain space the solidity coding language is static type it has contract or it is contract oriented contract oriented basically means solidity is designed specifically for writing smart contracts and the features like function visibility and and state uh, modifier right so it is contract oriented it has got inheritance property solidity supports inheritance allowing contract to inherit properties and functions from others and prom promoting reusability it also has a function modifier uh, uh, like it has a property of that of a function modifier also this is uh, uh, these are used in solidity to change or regulate functions behavior within a contract it has events uh, solidity uh, event provider a uh, logging mechanism for smart contract essentially for creating responsive dapps uh, it also has a error handling ability it has got huge libraries uh, where you can import contracts and use you have it's uh, as i said it is contract oriented it is visibility it has visibility specifier so a function can be visible or not visible depends uh, what kind of a function you are trying to declare and of course it has gas optimization property solidity provides low level control on the evm operation which can be used to optimize for gas use right so here i am trying to show you a basic simple straightforward solidity contract so if you are able to see this it's a very straightforward simple solidity contract where we are just uh, defining the the pragma solidity uh, this is the version we are using of the compiler version this is the contract we are writing okay here we are dec declaring a variable uint private number and here in this function we are assigning uh, a input from the user and assigning it to the state variable out here and in the third function we are returning the value of the number which we had stored in the variable right okay now let us see a simple solidity smart contract what are the things which we have as i said this is the compiler version pragma solidity 0.5.0 so now it is 0.8.9 you can use in into here we are declaring the contract test contract here we are uh, declaring the contract okay keyword that defines a smart contract code next string name this is a state variable here we have the function we are declaring the set function out here to set the name to the st state variable or set the value to the state variable and third this one is get name that is we are returning the name of the uh, uh, value we had stored uh, returning the value we had stored in the state variable so in order to be a solidity smart contract uh, developer the best friend in the initial days would be definitely uh, a browser ide i would say that's called a remix ide which can be used in a browser very very user friendly uh, maybe in the next 10 minutes we would be uh, using the remix id in order to deploy a very basic simple smart contract so your remix id i'll show you next but out here you can see uh, it is a very simple schematic of uh, a remix id which has the icon panel the number one you are seeing is the icon panel the second is the side panel it is a gui for various plugins etc okay and uh, third is the text panel and fourth is the terminal right 
uh, there is a question. I would definitely take it at the end, but uh, there is no prerequisite. Solidity can be your first coding language also. So you don't need to worry uh, that you have any prerequisite uh, uh, knowledge. But yes, you can start off with Solidity. If you know JavaScript, that is like, you don't need to struggle much in Solidity. That is what I can say, right? So you can start off with Solidity directly also. It is a very basic, simple and straightforward language, right? So in the icon panel, you have different icons like File Explorer, Solidity uh, Compiler. I'll show you uh, on the browser next, okay? You have the unit testing, static analysis and plugins also in the icon panel. You have got the compiler. The compiler helps in detecting errors in the code and converting the Solidity code to an application uh, binary in interface that is the ABI and byte code. To generate the ABI and by byte code to be used in the front end and back end, uh, we can use the compiler to compile the smart contract. Remix ID is very helpful for beginners because uh, you don't need to use complex uh, uh, coding in order to deploy it in, into a smart contract and get a feel of what exactly things are and how exactly it feels. So Remix ID gives you a set of uh, options where you uh, have a underlying blockchain, uh, a simulation that will give you the feel of deploying it in a blockchain. So it gives you various environments, which includes your test networks, the main networks and the virtual networks also. It, it gives you the option. So it is very user friendly and uh, I would say highly recommended for people those who are starting off with smart contract uh, solidity uh, development, right? So smart contract life cycle, if you say, first would be the development, development and testing of the smart contract using solidity in the first phase. The second would be ABI, ABI and bytecode conversion. The compiler would do that. The compiler converts the smart contract code into its respective ABI and into a bytecode. Third would be deployment of the smart contract into the blockchain the ABI and bytecode are, are deployed at a specific address in the blockchain network. And last would be the contract ex execution. Once the smart contract is deployed, the other user may start using this contract's functions, right? So this is the life cycle. So now let's have a step-by-step -step walkthrough of developing a smart contract. So I'm stopping this presentation and uh, I would be sharing my browser next. So let us get into my browser. Let me share my browser now. Yeah. So you can also try it out. It's very straightforward forward and simple. You just go to your browser, any browser you have. I just go ahead and open remix.ethereum.org, right? So as you can see, you have the icon panels out here. You have the file explorer uh, and you have the compiler out here. And here you have the deploy and uh, run for deploying and running the transactions, you have the option. So let us write a very basic uh, Solidity code, okay? So what you can do uh, you when you open it you will have something like this the uh, when you click on file explorer you will have something like this so go into the contract folder create new file okay you can just give any name to the file suppose master class eats dot sol has to be the suffix so i click on uh, click on that so i have my uh text editor ready for my codes so first you need to have these two things let me explain so first one is the license which you need to mention second one is the uh the version of compiler which you want to use that you have to mention so license would be mit license you can use that it is free to use spdx license identifier uh, MIT and the version I'm going to use of compiler is Pragma Solidity 0 0.8.0, right? So let us like write a very short, simple, straightforward contract out here. 
so you have the keyword and let's let be the name let the name be some num i just adding to numbers so i'm writing some num then i'm declaring the declaring the state variable so i'm declaring the variable type as uint it is an integer type uh, it would be an integer integer type so i'm writing int and i'm writing uh, the name of the variable is sum so next i'm writing a function uh, to get two numbers and add them right so let me write this function name of the function i would say let it be this only sum and i'll be taking two arguments num1 num2 then i have to declare whether it is public or private function or external internal public and i'm not returning anything out here so i am doing this okay okay so the best part about uh, remix ide you can instantly see the errors and you can rectify it also right so you can do this function sum okay fine so i have taken two numbers so let me use this state variable sum equals underscore num1 plus num2 very basic fine so you won't struggle in the syntax because the syntax is very simple in solidity right so here i have added the two numbers and it got stored in the uh, state variable name sun uh, sum so let's write a let's write a function to get the value get sum you won't need any uh, input in this and you have to mention what kind of uh, return value you are expecting i'm expecting a uint so i write return so the sum right yes this is again very interesting uh, in remix it will also show you some errors uh, which can be avoided but yes it is showing another error to me the function uh, state mutability can be restricted to view since i am not changing any state variable value so i can put it as view i can put it as view and here my contract is written it's a very straightforward simple contract which i am writing just to show you how remix works okay so again we have a option out here here we are using the compiler you can see the compiler version which i have chosen okay and since i have al already done the auto compile on so i don't need to uh, compile it again normally it would be not uh, like ticked so you have to compile the contract so once it is compiled then you can go for the deploy and run transaction so before deploying you can check this you can choose any of the uh, things any of the environment uh, for deploying the smart contract you can uh, normally you can choose uh, remix vm london this is uh, remix id's own blockchain which runs on the back background you can use that you can also run this on the ethereum network from remix so for example if i choose my uh, injected provider metamask okay you need to have your metamask installed of course the plugin installed and the metamask account attached to it so i can choose uh, the test network also for deploying suppose i choose the test network for deploying right i'm not using the remix id testnet i'm using the ethereum testnet so i'm deploying this 
So maybe you're not able to see my pop up, but uh, right now, basically, I'm paying some gas fees in order to deploy this smart contract in the test net, you can say, of Ethereum. So now I've paid some fees and the transaction is complete. The best part is I can check the transaction that has happened in the test net. As I said, all the transactions are visible to the public. So the transaction I did, I, I deployed the smart contract onto the blockchain and you can see the transaction. I can see the transaction that happened. Okay, the transaction is a success. You can see uh, the transaction hash. You can see from which address the transaction was done. You can also see the, uh, the address of the smart contract and everything. You can see how much gas I had to pay. It is 0. 0.0000 something something, 25 something, ETH, right? Now, the best part about Remix again is it gives you a front end experience also. So you need not connect it to a front end, a HTML, CSS front end. You can just test your contract out here itself. Okay. So uh, it's quite simple, straightforward a contract. So I had to input two numbers. So it was two and three. I'm doing the transaction. Yes. As I said, I have to pay some fees for that for every transaction I do. So I'm doing a transaction and I'm paying some fees here. Yes. Of course, it's the test net, so it is not a weekly. Now I'm trying to, and then I have done that transaction. Now I'm trying to get the value. So you can see out here, the two input values are two and three. Let me check. Yes, you can see the value as five out here. Cool. So I give you a very short and brief overview of blockchain. I gave a, a very brief overview of Solidity. I gave a brief overview of Remix ID, which definitely you can go ahead and try it out. And uh, you can definitely have a look on that. Right. So thanks a lot. Uh, Sanket, over to you. Any questions? I am ready to take the questions. Yeah. Thank you, Ambrish. Thank you for this great session. And I'm sure all the participants enjoyed it as much as I did. So uh, now, guys, it's time for question and answers. Uh, we will be taking questions. I have given all of you access to allow yourself to unmute and ask if you have any questions. So anybody has any question, feel free to go ahead and either type in or you can go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, even speak. Ralph has a question, as I see in the chat. Perhaps, Amrish, you can see it too. The technology is wonderful. How can start from scratch? Do I need to know how Bitcoin works? Now, this is uh, this question itself is very important. There's a lot of people who actually ask this. You know, everybody wants to do something, but they don't know where to start it from. So, what what do you suggest, Amrish? So, it is not at all necessary to know how Bitcoin works. Uh, it is first important to understand the underlying technology behind the blockchain, right? So it is quite simple and straightforward. It is no rocket science. People think that blockchain technology is rocket science. No, it is very straightforward, very simple. It is just another technology. You just need to have the basic knowledge. 
uh, yes, it is important to understand the blockchain technology and how it works before entering into the into the coding part or something, because see, it's a different world altogether because it's a decentralized world. Okay, it is not the traditional centralized world which we live in. So you need to have the perspective in order to be able to develop solutions and uh, get some practical applications, uh, like do some practical applications. So uh, just start off with understanding what blockchain is, uh, how it is immutable, how blocks are added. These are certain basics you need to start off. And I would say uh, anybody and everybody, uh, those who are working on blockchain is a newbie because it gained popularity in maybe in last two, three years. No, there, there, there is very few people in this world. Those who know about blockchain, maybe uh, hardly few would know five years, six years back, people would know about blockchain. So you are still early, try to get some knowledge and uh, not a big deal. It's not a rocket science. Yeah. Very well said. And Ralph, just to add to that, uh, we do run, uh, you know, a certification program, which is absolutely designed for people like you who want to go ahead and start their career in blockchain, but do not know where to get started from. So it's a very comprehensive program. You can go ahead and check with our team also, and perhaps they can suggest you something about it also. We do have a bad starting next month, so feel free to go ahead and enroll if you want to. Uh, I have another question. Uh, this is from Gokila. Where does this blockchain exist? Is the block added to blockchain on some criteria, like size, date of creation, et cetera? It's a very good question. Amresh, would you like to take it? Sure, sure, sure. See, blockchain is nothing but a, a, like maybe you can say a set of nodes which are connected to each other. Okay. When I'm talking about public blockchain. Okay. So, uh, suppose you have a computer, I have a computer, n number of people are having the computer, they have a software installed in that, and they are connected through internet and they are a part of the network. For example, Ethereum network, there are like hundreds of uh, uh, systems or the computers connected to each other who participate in the consensus mechanism and everybody has to store the data. Every, every node that is participating has to store the data. What is the data? Data of the transactions that are happening. Okay, so you can do that and you can be a part of the consensus uh, mechanism, right? You just need to, uh, if you talk about, uh, you can say uh, Ethereum network, you have to stake some Ethereum and you can be a part of the network and uh, be a part of the consensus mechanism. Yeah. All right, there's another question, but I'll take the follow-up question that Gokila has. So it's Ethereum network, that's that's what she's saying, or he's saying. Okay. All right, so I'll move on to the next question that is from Venkat Raman Murli. He says, can we implement blockchain in supply chain? Now, this is something, if you remember, Ambrish, we were discussing just two days ago. So right. here's the question, can we implement blockchain in supply chain as I'm currently doing my MS project? Okay, so supply chain, uh, I would say blockchain is a blessing in disguise for supply chain uh, because there is a lot of issues that are existing in a supply chain and blockchain is solving it. You can check out VeChain. VeChain is a protocol which is implementing. It's you cannot like. It's not like you would implement. It is already being implemented. Okay, in a large scale, I would say. You can check out VeChain, uh, which is implementing uh, blockchain technology into supply chain. Another news for you, uh, definitely. Uh, we have uh, Walmart. Walmart is implementing blockchain in its supply chain and that is being developed by IBM and already the big big shots are into the space through blockchain into supply chain but yes there is a huge scope I can say if you understand blockchain and you understand supply chain uh, it is like a big thing in itself yes almost everybody is in it you know FedEx is using it UPS is using it I know Ford is using it as a, as a matter of fact so there are plenty you know that that i can think of even if you go on the internet and probably just type in these names with blockchain and supply chain you, you're probably going to get a lot of reasons for it also so yeah. it's it, it's it's obviously been a boon i, I can i can uh, you know agree with amrish on that also sure. uh pratyush has a question this is again a question certification is it necessary to become a blockchain developer do you need to have a certificate or anything 
see skill is very important but uh, structured learning is again more important normally if i say uh, if you go on to youtube you will find a lot of stuff no doubt about it but the point is what happens with many people they go to youtube and they get lost in the youtube world they start a video and then it recommends another video which is completely different from that and they keep uh, hovering around but they don't get the structured knowledge uh maybe we are able to provide a structured knowledge uh, uh, like the knowledge in a structured way and we would provide you exactly what is needed for you because there are a lot of videos you will find on uh, the internet so a certification obviously adds on okay it gives you confidence and again of course credibility is also a big factor when you get into a corporate world yes that's a very good statement that you made amresh because in the world that we live in today as amresh already mentioned knowledge is absolutely free you don't need to pay for uh, you know knowledge it's all about you know learning it in the proper order structure as he mentioned you know structure is very important what to learn when you know you have to go a b c d e f g you cannot just learn those letters randomly and also who you're learning it from you know so that's again a thing people give their time and that's where the money comes in and that is how certifications or you know courses or programs are more or less defined certification that we also provide in blockchain is more or less a mark for that you have completed it in a structured fashion and uh, it's it's a proof of all the learning that you have done that's more or less in terms of the certification that you need which is a certificate of the knowledge that you gain at the end of the day not necessarily that uh, you know there's a there's a certificate that you that you mandate that's that's something that's mandatory for you to have in order to start a career you know it's, it's not something as such okay it's more or less a proof that uh, you have acquired the, that knowledge so that's that's what it is it's a relatively new industry so yep that should answer your question pratyush uh venkat raman has another question thank you are you providing courses on blockchain related with supply chain based industry so uh let me let me be absolutely clear on that so when we go ahead and teach you blockchain the process that is involved you know for example if i'm teaching you uh, if i'm teaching you statistics now statistics is going to remain statistics whether you use it for data science whether you use it for any other mathematical process similarly blockchain is going to go ahead and remain the same however once you have an understanding of blockchain you can go ahead and work on multiple case studies in the supply chain industry that will go ahead and help you have an understanding of how work is done in that specific industry and uh, you know get you ready for all the uh, you know future endeavors amrish have you trained people in supply chain industry how what's what's the response uh, you know is it hard it, it, for them phenomenal. it's it's phenomenal actually i would say uh, in fact in our course in uh, exaltius we have one module dedicated uh, for blockchain implementation in supply chain in iot in uh, ai all those things are there so uh, we also have that so I, i would say if you are in supply chain industry blockchain you should know because today tomorrow or day after tomorrow some day or the other the entire system is getting uh, going to get converted uh, into blockchain so better to have the knowledge now better than later yeah that is very well explained and i think venkat raman you have the answer to your question and we are looking forward to seeing you into the program as we speak also uh, gokila again has a question once once a block is created and added to the blockchaining is it possible to make any changes to it or should i create a new block with the required changes so what what do we do if we have to make any changes that's that's i can't do anything can't do anything it's immutable so it's that immutable. is what the main property of uh, the blockchain is so yeah. once you have added a block okay so you cannot change the data in that block if you're talking about specifically the transaction in the block right so that is the thing so if you are asking about deploying a contract and there is some bug in it so you can definitely upgrade the contract okay but uh, once a transaction is done it is done in a blockchain so that is how it works yeah awesome i see even kaivala has applied to it so uh yeah. it has to be consensual that's that's pretty sure how it right. works right. uh any more question guys i hope i didn't miss on any how long does it take to become a blockchain ethereum developer how much time does it take to become can i become one in 6 months you know just this question ralph it, it's a very common question okay 
And uh, this is not something that I'm hearing for the first time in blockchain. This is a similar question that I receive when how can we become a software developer or a data scientist or a cybersecurity expert or an HR exec. So the thing is, you know, there are two parts to it. One is you are equipped enough you know, to go ahead and play. For example, uh, you know, when, when you learn a sport, when you, when you start learning football or soccer, depending on where you, wherever you're from, you know, so you play in the nets, you know the rules, so you are ready to play football, but are you ready to play football professionally? So similarly, you know, when you go ahead and uh, learn something, so you need know all the tools, you will get all the tools, you'll have all the weapons in your arsenal, but again, you'll, learn, you'll need to learn to fight, you know? So that, these are two different things. Six months more or less is enough to get your journey started where, where I think probably after working for one year on real time project in a company, in an organization, perhaps then when you can say that, yes, I am, you know, an Ethereum blockchain developer. That's that's for how I feel like. But let's see. Let's see what Amresh has to say about this also. He has trained so many people. So he, he knows that. Okay. better. Amresh, so I would you? say. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the opportunity for answering this because this is one of the most common questions I face everywhere, wherever I go. So what happens is, uh, I would answer it in a different way. Uh, I think it all depends on how passionate you are for blockchain technology. Right? See, I personally believe blockchain, maybe for some people or for most people, is just a technology. But uh, for me, it is a way of life or a way of thinking a decentralized world, a creating a trustless world. So the more passionate you are for a particular thing, the more passionate you are for learning a particular thing, the shorter will be the time you will take. But yes, and there is no limit to it, how short you can uh, take. And there is no limit to it, how long you can take. I know people struggling for four years, still trying to become something in blockchain technology, right? Struggling four, five years. But what I'm trying to say is, it all depends on how passionate you are. But yes, looking at the timeline of six months, I would say six months is a good enough time to learn the basics, get into the groove. But yes, after that, learning in blockchain is never enough. Today also, I keep doing courses. I keep learning things. I keep learning new protocols, new stuff. And I do it every day. So learning has no limit. It has no boundaries. But if you are asking specific to like six months, would it take six months would get you started? Definitely. And uh, of course, if you are more passionate, maybe four months, five months. But yes, the journey starts after that. Only. Yeah. So six months, you should be ready to start and rest when, when you go ahead and start learning is an ongoing process. As I said already, you know, you, you, you cannot call yourself as a learned man. You, you are a lifelong learner when, you, when you're learning or working in the technology field or any, any field for, the, for a matter of fact. So I, I guess uh, you should have gotten your answer. Speaking of time and timeline, there is another question that Gokila has. Is there a lifetime for the blocks? See, once it's on the blockchain, it is there in the blockchain, right? So there is no lifetime. Once it is created, that is a part of the blockchain and that is there in the blockchain. Finish. So and uh, there's a follow up question. Are there any downsides to this technology? Yes, of course, there will always be a downside if I'm doing blockchain. So I can't say everything is good in blockchain. So there is always a flip side to it. Initially, uh, in the blockchain technology, since people were not aware about the technology and how things work. So last, I would say, till 2021, 22, you can say, uh, there, was a, there were lots of things happening in the cryptocurrency space, you can say, where people were told something and uh, like people took blockchain technology. They don't know blockchain. They understood cryptocurrency and they saw that Bitcoin going from some thousand dollars to uh, some 60, 70 thousand dollars. So there was a FOMO created among people. See, this is a new technology, invest in it and you can be millionaires overnight, right? So this was one thing which was created in like, you can say from 2018, 19, 20, 21 around, right? So this was, uh, this is a downside. I would say people are not aware enough. So like there are some, mischievous elements who keep doing it in the blockchain technology that's on the public side so when you come to pure technology yes definitely when there is complete transparency 
there are certain issues because private enterprises would not want many of the things disclosed to the public right so when it comes to private entities using blockchain it becomes difficult for them to use the public blockchains okay so that is where the permissioned blockchain and the private blockchain comes into play uh, but yes there are solutions uh, to many of the problems but yes problems are still there bigger problem would be i would say uh, when you talk about ethereum blockchain there is gas fees and there are a uh, high amount of gas fees when you do a transaction on ethereum so many a times the general public or the normal public is not able to participate in the blockchain so there are few yes well thank you and uh, as as mentioned by amrish it's a new technology there are still things that are being worked on uh, still uh, bitcoin more or less is what made it popular you know with with all the rois attached to it you know and everything i bought my first blog uh, bitcoin in 2013 for that matter so you know that was that was a great time back then but yes perhaps that's that's the source of knowledge for a lot of people about blockchain and stuff but again nobody can also go ahead and deny the fact that blockchain is the future uh, a lot of you probably would have heard about metaverse 5g web 3.0 and blockchain is turning out to be the source of uh, you know activating all these realms together okay so this is something that holds a lot in the future there's a lot of opportunities that are going to be coming in 2024 25 all we can do is be ready and grasp them with both hands and that is why we have the course after all so uh, i guess i do not see any more questions coming up a lot of thank yous though uh ralph has access could you please let me know when would you be run the program ralph i'm just typing in my email address also just one minute let me just type it in and let me share it with everybody so if any one of you have anything to say or ask feel free to go ahead and drop me an email and i'll be more than happy to go ahead and assist you with it ralph says could you please let me know when do you like to run the program focusing on newcomers ralph, almost 90% of the students let let me get amresh also on to this amresh how many people already know blockchain you know out of the total students that you that you train very is there even few. one a very few I, i would say like when i talk to uh, like uh, employees of big corporates working in the technology field they also don't understand blockchain right handful of people are there in this world you can say those who understand blockchain in the real sense okay Correct. real you sense is not not those people who feel that they understand but they don't but actually <laughs> who understands in the true essence of things now ralph having said that uh, almost 90% of the students that we have in the batches okay these are all people who are planning to start from scratch also we have designed the course in such a way that anybody can actually go ahead and do it there are so many students who have never done coding in the past and are actually learning learning blockchain you know people like you people there are others also i had a guy who was talking about supply chain right now you know he was doing his ms project so you know assuming that he is also from a supply chain background not a development profile so it, it's not a property that the developers actually hold anybody can actually go ahead and make a career in blockchain and as i said before that's how we go ahead and approach towards our students also and that's how we go ahead and take train our students also having said that i guess uh, this is going to go ahead and bring us to the end of the session i hope that you guys liked it i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to seeing all of you into the program going forward also on that note uh, this is me sanket signing off amrish any last words for our learners today uh thank you sanket for giving me the opportunity for sharing my knowledge on blockchain and thank you everyone for listening to me patiently hope uh, you gain some knowledge and that would be uh, good news for me thank you thanks a lot thanks a lot thank you everybody thank you amresh you have a wonderful day night depending on wherever you are from and i wish you all the best for your future stay strong stay safe bye bye take care thank you all of you